All right, guys, we are starting a new unit. And in this unit, we are really getting into the heart of calculus. Um, you know, our first unit on day one, we started by uh, talking a little bit about what we would be doing and about how we were trying to find the slope of a curved line. How do we find the rate of change at a point? Um, and then we learned some about limits. And now we're gonna put those two things together. Uh, we're gonna use our limits to um, make that first day's lesson go much easier, much better. Now that you know some more math, um, we can we can actually get into the heart of cal calculus. So go back, reach back into your heads in that first day's lesson, and make sure you remember how to find the approximate slope at a point. So when x is negative one, what is the slope of this tangent line? Um, what is the rate of change of this function? What is the slope at this point? Um, go ahead, you're gonna need a calculator, obviously, but go ahead and calculus, calculate this on your own. You should notice that it is negative at the very least. So if you don't get an answer that's negative, you might be wrong. Okay, and hopefully you got um, negative two. And um, it's about negative two. If you got negative 2.001 or negative 1.999, that's cool too. Um, but the, the slope is about two. And let's make sure we remember how to do it. Um, so remember, we have this point negative one, one, right? So when we plug in negative one, we get one. And we need another nearby point. Let's do negative 1.001. And when we square that, negative 1.001 squared is negative 1.002001. And when we do y2 minus y1, um, negative 1.002001 minus 1. Oh, sorry, this should come out positive. Oh my gosh, guys. Um, hopefully you see what I did wrong here. When I type this, and this is a common error I see kids do, and I, I realize it's obviously wrong because the y value is not negative. Um, when we square a number, we need to make sure it's in parentheses. Um, when we square a number, it should always come out positive. Um, and it didn't there, it's because I didn't put the number in parentheses. So it should be positive 1.00021 minus one, um, divided, so y2, this is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So um, we're gonna get this minus one divided by negative uh, 1.001 minus negative one, and we should get negative 2.001, which is about negative two. Um, real quickly, for those of you who don't remember, there's a cool calculator trick that makes like it much less likely that you make a mistake. And that cool calculator trick is you can just put in y equals x squared into um, the y equals button. And um, you can just set up your y2 minus y1 in a fraction, and you can literally do y2 minus y1. So um, let's let's look at what that looks like. You press variables, the variables button um, right here. Variables, y variables. So we have to go over to the right to y variables. And we put our y equals x squared in y1. That's where it says y1. So variables, y variables, y2. Oh man, I got out of the fraction, hold on. Because I was trying to show you something. Okay, variables, y1. And we do it just like function notation, it's y1 of negative 1.001, that's like the, that's the second point we're doing, minus y1 of negative one. So it's y2 minus y1 over um, x2 minus x1. Um, and so that's that's a nice, easier way to do it than all that typing I did and writing it down. Um, I, it gets a lot, I, I find it makes it a lot easier. Okay, so, um, well, let's do one more. Uh, go ahead and uh, find the approximate slope at x equals three. Uh, make sure you can do that. And you should have gotten that it was about equal to six. Um, and again, I'm gonna use this um, y2 minus y1 trick where I'm gonna do, okay, so this is three and I'm gonna choose another, so three comma something and 3.001 comma something. That's gonna be what I use here. Um, and I'm just gonna use this y2 minus y1 trick. So alpha y equals, and remember we can go to variables, y variables. Um, I put in y equals x squared into uh, y1. And so when I do it, I pick y1 of, so this is like f of 
3.001 minus, I picked, oh no, guys, so terrible, minus y1 of 3, so oh, this needs parentheses here, it won't work, y1 of 3 over 3.001 minus 3, so this is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and I get 6.001. Um, as my slope. Now, um, I'm going to tell you that the exact slope here is 6, um, and we might have been able to guess that um, based on whether you got 5.999 or 6.01, you might have guessed 6, but the, the actual exact slope, and we will know how to do this by the end of the day, um, and maybe we'll come back to it, is 6, and we want to write the equation of a tangent line to y equals x squared at x equals 3. So, um, let's remember from Algebra 1, this is going to be an important skill, we're going to use this all year long, so pay attention if you're not sure. Remember from Algebra 1, we learned a few different ways to write um, equations of lines, y equals mx plus b, if you have the slope and the y-intercept, that's one way to do it. Um, there's also the transformation form of a line, and this is going to be much more useful in calculus. And so this is going to be, I'm going to put a box around this in a second because it's important y equals the slope times x minus x1 plus y1. Um, if you move the y1 to the other side, it's called point slope form. Um, but this is basically when there's a slope, if you, have, if you know the slope, and you know a point, x1 comma y1, uh, you can just write out the equation of the line. So um, let's see if you remember that. Uh, I, I won't count this as a point, but you know if you know how to write it, it's great. Um, so I'm going to put a green box around this because we're going to be using this a lot this year. Okay, so we need a point and a slope to be able to write this line. And um, at x equals 3, we can find a point by plugging in 3 into the equation. 3 squared is 9, and so when x is 3, the point is 9. There's a point at 3, 9. And the slope is equal to 6. We just said that. And so if the slope is uh, 6 and the point is 3, 9, then the equation is y equals the slope times x minus x1, so x minus 3, plus 9. And remember with transformations, this is the same as like taking a point at 0, 0 and shifting it 3 to the right and 9 up. Um, and that should make sense, right? We took y equals 6x and shifted it 3 to the right and 9 up. Um, and remember, shifting it to the right is minus 3. It's backwards from what you might think. And shifting it up 9 is just adding a 9 to the outside. So if you have a point and a slope, you can write the equation of the tangent line. And we're going to be doing this a lot. You'll get a few chances to do it today. Um, okay, so with that in mind, um, we're going to go into our notes. And... Um, here we have a spaceship, and this is the flight path of a spaceship here. Um, a spaceship approaches a far off planet at time X minutes after its retro rockets fire, so it's approaching the thing and then its rockets fire. Its distance, f of x, in thousands of kilometers from the surface of the planet is given by f of x equals x squared minus 8x plus, 16, plus 18. So at different times, we can see how far away the planet is from the surface. So let's use our general graph knowledge. Um, this is like from, you know, well, well before calculus to describe what are some things that are true about this graph. Um, and hopefully we noticed a bunch of things. We might have noticed that like the closest the rocket gets to the planet is two, and this is in thousands, so like it gets 2,000 kilometers away from the planet before it starts going back up. Maybe we notice that um, it is getting closer to the planet until time equals four, um, four minutes, and then it's getting further away from the planet. Um, maybe we know that it's concave up, that it's actually like accelerating upwards the whole time. Um, so there are a bunch of things we could say. Um, we might notice that the equation um, will tell us that when it began firing its retro rockets, it was 18,000 kilometers away from the planet. And these are all some things that, that we might want to say. Okay. Um, now we want to describe the velocity. And velocity is not where it is. It's about what direction and speed it's moving. 
Um, so go ahead and try to describe the velocity of the spaceship. These are all some pre-calculus things we want to be able to do. And hopefully we can see that the velocity is zero. Um, it's neither getting closer to nor farther away at time equals four, at its vertex. Um, we might notice that the velocity is negative, that the rate of change is negative as we get um, up, up until between time equals zero and time equals four, and then the slope is positive, the velocity is positive um, after time equals four. We might also know that the slopes are um, increasing the whole time. So it's like a negative big number and then a negative number, and then it's getting it to be a smaller negative number as you get closer, this is what concave up means. So the velocities are actually increasing the whole way. Um, it goes from being very negative to kind of negative to a little positive to very positive. The slopes get bigger and bigger. That's what makes it curve. Um, so those are some things we might say about the velocity. Okay, find the average rate of change from five to 5.1 minutes. And I'll let you guys do this on your own. What is the average rate of change of this rocket? And so to do this, the average rate of change, how much did it change by? This is an Algebra 1 skill that we want to be pretty good at, is we want to take 5.1 minutes, and we'll say, well, how far did it move in that 0.1 minute? So we need to do f of 5.1, y2, minus y1, over um, x2 minus x1. And so... Um, again, we can use this nice calculator trick where I just put in y equals um, x squared uh, minus 8x plus 18, and then I can do y2 minus y1. So I can do, kind of just like what I wrote down on my page, um, y1 of 5.1 minus variables. I go, I press the variables button, I go over to y variables plus enter, and I choose y1, that's where I put my function in, um, of 5 over 5.1 minus 5. And I can get that the average rate of change was 2.1, and we should have units here. We want to have units here. So what are the units um, of this 2.1? Well, this is, it changed by 2.1 thousand kilometers per minute. So it changed um, by 2.1 thousand kilometers per minute, or we could say um, 2,100 kilometers per minute. That's fine also, okay? So that's the average rate of change. What about a formula for the average rate of change for any point X to the right of five minutes? What's the formula for the rate of change? So if I pick some time X and I wanna find what was the average rate of change between time equals five and x, what would the formula be? And hopefully um, we can see that we would just do y2, so f of x minus f of five over x minus five, right? Um, but we can actually do f of x here. Um, I'm gonna plug in for f of x what f of x is equal to, and I'm gonna plug in for five as well. f of x, is equal to x squared minus 8x plus 18. This is a formula that will find me the y value at any x, okay? So this is f of x, so this y value, um, minus, I'm gonna find what f of five is. f of five is equal to 25 minus 40 plus 18, it looks like three, over x minus five, and I'm going to simplify. I can combine these like terms, and I can see that the formula is this. So this is a formula that will tell me the average rate of change, y2 minus y1 uh, minus x2 over x2 minus x1 for any point x to the right. And we're going to use this. Um, this is called the difference quotient. I don't know if you ever learned that in Algebra 1 or pre-calculus or wherever, um, but it's when you do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, it's called a difference quotient um, because you're doing two differences. Differences is when you subtract and you're dividing them. That's a quotient. So it's called the difference quotient. And so how, so we got an 
up in C, okay, up in C, we got an average rate of change of 2.1 at x equals 5 minutes. How could we get a more accurate velocity at 5 minutes? So at 5 minutes, you know, the average rate of change between 5 and 5.1 minutes was 2.1 thousand kilometers per minute. But how could we get a more accurate rate of change? And the idea is we could just use a, an even closer value to 5 minutes and find that point. Um, so maybe we could use time equals... 5.001 instead of time equals 5.1. But now we can use this difference quotient here. Um, we don't have to do y2 minus y1 in exactly the same way. We can use this, this piece of work that this formula that will work for all x's. Um, and I guess we should have noticed that if we plugged in 5.1 into this, I'll go ahead and do this real quick. If we plugged in 5.1, it should give us 2.1. It's the average rate of change. And so let's verify this. So if I do 5.1 squared minus 8 times 5.1 plus 15 over 5.1 minus 5, it should tell us that the average rate of change is 2.1. And it does. And so now we're going to use the same formula, this difference quotient formula, to find the average rate of change at time equals 5.01. 5.001. Go ahead and do that. So um, let's do it. I'm going to go ahead and put this in here, 5.001, 5.001, 5.001. And when I type it into my difference quotient, I get 2.001. And so I get that the, um, at this time, the average rate of change is 2.001. But we can do even better, guys, because this is just an estimate. But when we're plugging in 5.1 and then 5.0001, um, what, is, what is this thing that we're doing very, very, very similar to? Um, and I, I hope we realize that this is just a limit. And in fact, it is uh, what limit? What, what limit are we doing here as we get closer and closer to 5? Well, we're doing um, the limit as x goes to 5 of x squared minus 8x plus 15 over x minus 5. This is the limit that we're doing, and we've learned how to do these limits. And we just did it by plugging in 5.001, and we saw that it was getting close to 2.001, and so it's about 2. Um, but we don't need a calculator to do this, and this is one of the cool things, is that we won't... We used a calculator for all this stuff up here. We used a calculator in the warm-up, but we can see that finding that exact slope, we actually don't need a calculator because it is doing a limit. Uh, go ahead and do this limit on your own. What technique should we use here? Um, and of course, we should try direct substitution first, but after that, we use factor and cancel because it was an indeterminate form. And when we do factor and cancel, uh, we get x minus 5 times x minus 3 over x minus 5. And it's the limit as x goes to 5. We can now do direct substitution. 5 minus 3 is 2. And so that limit is 2. Um, and this kind of gets around all this in-between work. And this is a, a nice limit we can do. Okay, so if we know that the exact slope is 2, so at x equals 5, the slope is 2. We're going to use that skill we learned earlier today to write the equation of the line that passes through the point where x equals 5. So um, go ahead and write that equation of the tangent line. Um, so you're doing the equation of the tangent line, and uh, hopefully we got that we need 5, and we need a y value, so we need a point and a slope. And the point, when we plug in 5 into x squared minus 8x plus 18, we already did that earlier, f of 5 was equal to 3, so the point was 5, 3. And the slope is 2, and so we can get y equals the slope times x minus x1 plus y1. Um, so we want to start feeling pretty good about this slope equation, um, y equals m times x minus x1 plus y1. Okay. okay, so what does this tangent line of the rocket represent? Um, it's kind of a weird thing, right, that we've got this this line, but we never actually like talked about what it is. What does this tangent line represent? And it represents 
What would happen if all of a sudden the rocket went, started going a constant speed? A tangent line is a constant rate of change, involves a constant rate of change. And if the rocket all of a sudden got rid of its boosters and gravity didn't exist to pull it down and it started go, kept going the same speed forever, um, this tangent line um, would represent that rocket's flight path. And for a little while, I want to go ahead and graph this for you. We did this a little bit. Oh, I wish I had not deleted that. X squared minus 8x, what was it, plus 18. And let's graph the tangent line, y equals 2 times x minus 5 plus 3. And you'll notice, oh, I, I need to zoom out just a little bit. You'll notice that at um, x equals 3, oops, x equals 5. At x equals 5, the tangent line is uh, touching that line. And remember that if we zoom in on it, the further we zoom in, the more exact the tangent line becomes looking like that graph. And in fact, we can zoom in more and more and more and they start to look almost identical. So remember that the tangent line and the actual function are, are um, almost identical to each other if you zoom in far enough. And so the tangent line can be used to estimate the actual value. We'll be using that more later this year. Okay. Um, oh man, well, I guess we answered the question of this next one. If we zoomed in very close to x equals 5, we notice that the tangent line um, looks almost exactly like the curved line. And so the tangent line is straight. The curved line is not straight, but they look almost the same when you zoom in. And it's only that when you zoom out, you can start seeing... Oh man, I zoomed out. Oh, I'm, I think I'm zooming in. Hold on. I think I like... I'm out of position here. Zoom out, zoom out. I think I zoomed in really far, so. And if we zoom out far enough, we'll start seeing that they'll, they start separating. You can see a little bit of space between the red and the blue line there. And if we zoom far enough out, we can see that the tangent line is in fact a straight line and the blue one was not a straight line, but when we zoomed in, they looked almost identical to each other. And we'll make use of that later this year. So here's, let's take a break. Let's take a pause for a second and make sure we understand our, our idea. Our idea is, from our first lesson, is that if you have two points that are very close to each other, you can estimate the slope of a curved line. Okay. And then we learned about limits. We said that, look, if you get really, really close together, that's doing a limit. Um, and we can use limits analytically now to actually find the exact value of slopes um, rather than just estimating them. And it's going to be a lot less work, and it's going to be faster, and we're not going to need a calculator anymore, which is great. So we can write the slope of the secant line between two points, um, c f of c and x f of x, as what? What's the slope between these two points? Well, it's f of x minus f of c. This is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And we will always be able to do this. So our idea is this will be a point. So there will be a point at c comma f of c for any function. We can always just have a point. And then our other thing will be just a general um, point somewhere nearby. We'll say, hey, look, there's some nearby point x comma f of x. And we can find the slope between them using y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This fraction is called a difference quotient. We are um, doing a quotient, which means dividing two differences. And the derivative is what happens as these points get closer and closer and closer and closer together. So there's a limit we can do. What is the actual limit that we're doing to have these two points? Remember, actually, um, this is our fixed point that we're going to use. Um, this is the point we're like looking for the slope at, and this is going to be our, our point we're going to say like could be wherever. Um, and so what limit are we allowed to do here that will make this give me the exact slope? Well, it's the limit. Uh, hold on. Oh, I guess we should say here. Uh, it's as this value gets closer and closer to C. So as we choose an X value closer and closer to C, remember on our front page, 
Um, when we had five, we chose 5.1. That was pretty close. And then we get, got even closer and did 5.001. Um, the idea is the closer we get, the better the estimate gets. And so we can actually find the exact value. This is the derivative. Um, the slope of the tangent line, the rate of change at any instant is the limit as x goes towards c of this difference quotient. So of y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, because as the x gets closer and closer, what we're doing is we're choosing closer and closer and closer points to find the slope between. And that should remind us a lot of our first uh, homework. So I guess we should say as x goes to c. This is this needs to be memorized. This is one of the forms of the derivative. It's guaranteed to show up on the AP exam. Um, and we don't want to memorize it as much as we want to understand it. If you have any point, so like 2 comma 7, of some curved function, it doesn't matter what it is, we can find the exact slope at that point by choosing another point, x, and another um, y value f of x. And we can say the slope between this is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And what we'll do is to actually make them get closer and closer and closer together so they're right on top of each other is we'll do the limit as this x gets closer to this point. So the limit as x goes to 2 of f of x minus 7. And um, you'll always be able to, to use your tricks of doing limits that we've already learned to evaluate this. Let's do one example together to make sure um, we can do it. We've got this parabola. Okay, so I believe this parabola, you know, looks like this, something like this. Okay, and we want to find the slope at x equals 5. What's the slope? Um, oh, sorry, I'm translating this for you. I should have let you do this. It says find f prime of 5. This means what is the slope of this function, the instantaneous rate of change, when x is 5? Okay. And to do this, we need a point. So we're going to plug in 5, because we want to know the slope at 5. So this is not any different than our first lesson. And when we plug in 5, we get 25 minus 15 minus 4. I believe that's 6. So we've got this point, 5 comma 6. And we're going to take another point, x comma f of x. And we're going to do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So our y2... Um, I'm, I'm going to write it right here. The, the, it's going to be the limit. I'll write this limit in a second. The limit of y2 minus y1 over x2, which is x. I guess I should have written this. Minus x1. And we will have what f of x is equal to. They gave us f of x here. So this is x squared minus 3x minus 4. That's f of x minus 5, oh sorry, minus 6, over x minus 5. And what we want to do is let this x value get closer and closer and closer to 5. So it's the limit as x goes towards 5. So you'll always see we do the limit as x goes towards the point we're doing the, the, the derivative at, and we'll always plug in the function minus the function value at that point. So we've got, this is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's that's what will always happen there. And um, now we can use our limit property. So we're going to do limit as x approaches 5, and I'm going to simplify this. This is x squared minus 3x minus 4 minus 6 is minus 10 over x minus 5. Go ahead and do this limit on your own. You should um, know your analytic limit, limit skills and be able to do this. And um, when we plug it in, we will always get an indeterminate form unless we've made a mistake. Um, it should always give us an indeterminate form. So we should check it to make sure we get zero over zero, which we do. Um, and so we can use factor and cancel. So we can do x minus uh, five times x plus two over x minus five. You may have noticed I didn't want to put an equals here. I put a little arrow um, because these aren't equal because I haven't written the limit here. And I didn't want to write the limit again, so I just put arrow so they're not actually equal to each other. Um, these two expressions aren't equal to each other unless I put the limit on both. And now I can do direct substitution. Um, 5 plus 2 is 7. So um, this means that at 
x equals 5, the slope is 7. The y value is 6, but the slope is 7. So go ahead and use the information that the slope at x equals 5 is 7 to find the equation of the tangent line. And hopefully you're able to find it. Um, remember, we need a slope and a point. The slope, we said, was 7. And the point is 5, 6. We, did, we got that by earlier plugging in 5 and getting out 6. And so the equation is y equals the slope times x minus 5 plus 6. Um, we shifted to the right by 5 and up by 6. So that's our transformation. So there's our equation of the tangent line. Okay, try this one on your own. Um, if f of x equals x squared plus 5x plus 1, what is f prime of c for c equals negative 2? And let's start by making sure we can all set up the, um, the correct difference quotient here. So it should be the limit as x goes towards what? Well, it's as x goes towards negative 2 of y2 minus y. It's f of x minus um, f of c. I'll plug that in a second, over x minus c. So f of x is just the y value at any point here. So it's x squared plus 5x plus 1. So it's the y value at any point. Minus the y value at negative 2 um, is, OK, so f of negative 2 is negative 2 squared is 4. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10 plus 1. So, um, so minus negative 5. Be careful, we're subtracting a negative here, over x minus negative 2. And again, um, in our heads, what we should be realizing is that, okay, we've got some, like, I think it looks like this, some parabola, okay, we've got some parabola that looks like this, and um, at x equal, oh, this wasn't at all what this parabola looked like. That's terrible. There's some parabola. I don't know, it looks like this. That's also bad. Okay. Um, at x equals negative 2, the y value is negative 5. And so there's this point negative 2, negative 5. And we want to find the slope there. And so we're taking another point at x comma f of x and we're letting this x value get really close to negative 2. So, oh, you guys couldn't see that. OK, you lost the one. OK, so <laughs> I'm going to repeat this here with it on camera. So our idea is there's a parabola, looks something like this. And when x is negative 2, the y value is negative 5. We got that by plugging it in. We plugged in negative 2 and got negative 5. And we are taking another point, you know, at x comma f of x, and we're letting this x value get closer and closer and closer to negative 2 to actually get the exact slope. So the y value here will always just be what the equation is for y. So we've got this equation that we plug in for y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And um, now we can actually do this limit. So we've got limit as x goes to negative 2. Of, we can simplify this. This is x squared plus 5x plus 6 over x plus 2. And this is also going to be a factor in cancel 1. It also gives me an indeterminate form, and I will um, factor this. This is x plus 3 times x plus 2 over x plus 2. And so this limit, I can just plug in negative 2 directly. Negative 2 plus 3 equals 1. Okay, so I got 1. And I need to determine the equation of the tangent line. So I note this is the slope at x equals negative 2. And so write the equation of the tangent line. We needed the slope, which is 1, and a point, which we said was negative 2, negative 5. And now we can write the equation of the tangent line. It's y equals 1, which we don't need to write, but we could if we wanted to, times x minus negative 2, which is plus 2, minus 5. Um, so remember to shift it to the left by 2, we need to add 2. 
Um, and if you wanted to simplify this into slope intercept form, you could. These can always be simplified. Like if we had wanted to simplify this into slope intercept form, um, it ends up being like minus 29. So negative 35 plus six. Um, both of these are fine um, and either one of them will be accepted. You don't need to like choose which one unless it's a multiple choice question. You might need to like get from here to here if it was a multiple choice question, but if it's not, if it's a free response question, you can do whatever you want, it's fine. Okay, last one. Whew, this one looks tricky. So we've got f of x and we wanna find f prime of c for c equals one. Let's set up our equation. We're gonna do the slope at one is equal to the limit as x goes to one, as the x value is getting closer and closer to one, of f of x minus, I need to get f of c, so let's find f of one here. So f of one is one minus four plus one plus one, I believe that's six, over x minus one. So hopefully we're getting pretty good at setting this up. Um, yeah, okay, so we can simplify the numerator. This is the limit as x goes to one of x cubed minus four x squared plus x plus two over x minus one. And this one's a little tricky. Uh, we do need to do um, long division here. Um, and so let's do that. So x cubed minus, four, or you could do synthetic division if you know that, it's fine. Um, but some sort of division of polynomials x goes into this, x squared times x squared times x minus one is x cubed minus x squared. And we are subtracting this. Subtracting a negative is a positive. Um, and so we'll get negative three x squared. We're gonna bring down the rest. x goes into negative three x squared, negative three x times negative three x times x minus one is negative three x squared negative three x times negative one is positive three x, and we are going to subtract this. So x, so these will always cancel out. x minus three x is negative two x, and I'm gonna bring down the two. x goes into negative two x, negative two times. Negative two times x minus one is negative two x minus, uh, uh, plus two, good. And that cancels out fully, which is what should happen in long division. And so this is the same as the limit as x goes to one of x squared minus three x minus two. Um, and we can do direct substitution now. So this is um, one minus three minus two, which is negative four. So if the slope at one is negative four, what's the equation of the tangent line? Well, it's y equals negative four times x minus, the point is that x equals one, and the y1 value was six plus six. Um, so remember we're using y equals m times x minus x1 plus y1. And so we always need to just plug in whatever our c comma f of c is here. And this is coming from f prime of c. So we'll always have this, the derivative and we'll have uh, a slope. Okay, guys, that's our big ideas for the day. Hopefully um, we're feeling pretty good with this idea that we, we'll be able to use limits to shorten our work for us and not have to use calculators. Because if we have any curved function and we take um, a point, we can take another point, I just made these numbers up, okay. We can take another point at x comma f of x and find the slope between these by doing y1 minus y2 over, sorry, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 that's the slope between these, but then we can do a limit to actually get these points right on top of each other. We do the limit as x goes towards whatever our original point was. Um, and this will always end up being zero over zero. It ends up being an indeterminate form. Um, and so we can use our limit techniques that we've already used. Um, so practice this tonight. Hopefully you feel good about it. Uh, have a good rest of your day.